Hey guys, so some pretty exciting news. The enemy Fetchlands will be reprinted in Modern Horizons 2, uh, as well as a lot of other cards. I think the Shocklands are getting the secret layer treatment now. And I, it's pretty fascinating. Fable Passage from Throne of the Eldrin, obviously one of the chase cards before being reprinted. I think it's even in a, cha uh, in a Challenger's deck, if I'm correct, if I remember seeing it. I mean, Challenger decks are actually really, really good. If you want to play standard, you just buy two of them and you basically have a deck. So Commander is coming out again. We have a lot of supplemental products like Modern Horizons. Currently, we have Jumpstart. We don't know if Jumpstart will ever go away. I can tell you Jumpstart is being reprinted like to Oblivion. Uh, inside information there uh, for my distributor. Um Walmart and Walgreens and so on. They're, they've restocked and they have almost unlimited supply of Jumpstart. So now we are going to talk about the Fetchlands and is there a breaking point? Is this the breaking point of Fetchlands where the Fetchlands all, including Misty Rainforest and so on, go below $50, the regular version. Now, we have a lot of different versions of the enemy Fetchlands. I believe it was reprinted in Modern Masters 2017, um, if that's correct, with uh, Lily and Snap. Um, these cards are absolutely going to drop in price, and I can tell you that this will break these camels back. This is a straw that breaks the camels back, and the data I have is Tomogoyf. Tomogoyf, when it originally came out, when it was first reprinted in the original Modern Masters, it went up in price. <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding you. It, it got reprinted, so there were more of them, but demand increased so much because the joke was, the joke at the time was, what well, goes well with the Tamagoyf you just opened? Well, free other Tamagoyfs. So the price of Tamagoyf actually went up in price. And they kept reprinting and reprinting and reprinting. So a $200 Tamagoyf becomes $100, becomes $50, and now becomes... No, I don't think anyone... I would not even buy list a Tamagoyf, honestly. So if someone tried to buy... What is the buy list in a Tamagoyf? Someone put in the comments below. It cannot be that high. Um, I, I just don't see the demand for that card. Now, part of that, to be fair, is that Tamagoyf is no longer as good of a card as it was when it was reprinted in Modern Masters, where many people said it was one of the best cards. You know, Tamagoyf has gotten weaker, so you could say, oh, well, it's a combination of how many times it's been reprinted and it got weaker. I think it's actually something underlying that a little bit more, which pertains to the Fetchlands. What if Wizard of Coast said, every two years we're going to reprint the Fetchlands? That when that... that the, it's not the reprint itself. It's the fact that they are going to continue to reprint every two years or every year. Like Fable Passage, for instance, when it came out, was a $30, $40 card. Uh, it was very hyped. And people thought it was the best card ever. And it's been reprinted to the ground. And, you know, you look at Throne of the Eldraine, I know a certain YouTuber is really in love with the collector's editions and so on. I'm not because everything in there, including the collector's edition versions of the card, there's no telling, like I can guarantee, I can almost guarantee it to you. Maybe not the exact version, but probably the same artwork. Maybe they'll have diamonds in there or something in the future, who knows. Um, I promise you that they will be reprinted. I promise you Fable Passage will be reprinted over and over and over again. Uh, Brazen, Brazen, the blue mythic that was that I think is really good. Um, it was printed, reprinted in Challenger deck. I think Fable was also in a Challenger deck. Embercleaf also in a Challenger deck. I mean, just like from the Challenger deck alone, forget the other products. They reprinted everything of value. And there are very few, I mean, uh, Great Heads, I think, is probably the only real one that kind of escaped it. But who knows? And that's where I am going with this. The Fetchlands are at a breaking point, not because of how many times they've been reprinted, but because at some point in time, you know they're going to reprint it every year, every other year, just like Tamagoyf. What broke Tamagoyf, 
I, I do think there's contributing factors. One, Tom O'Goyf is less meta. I, I guess meta would be the word. And two, you know, there is just more supply of it because there's just so many more reprints. But the main reason Tom O'Goyf is not a $200 card and it's so cheap right now, I think it's a $20 card right now, is because we know that it will be reprinted in another master set. We know it will be reprinted again and again and again and again. What do we know about the Shocklands? They will be reprinted again and again and again and again. Secret layers, masterpieces. We have so many different versions of Hollow Fountain. Like you're, like if you had to do a scryfall of, or you went to Card Kingdom, you typed in the Hollow Fountain, you might have find like 20 different versions of it. There's box toppers. I think the, the box toppers are the enemy ones only. Oh, oh, even better. Um, there's judge versions of certain fetch lands, but not other fetch lands. That's kind of annoying, right? I think there's a judge version of flooded plains, but not of like anything else. Um, there's GP versions of it or a you know, tournament version of it. I mean, look at, I mean, just look at the shock lands. They came out with a new secret layer with all 10 of them. Pretty interesting. So at some point in time, it's not even the fact that there's so many of them out there. It's just the fact, well, I mean, it contributes. I'm not saying it does not contribute. I'm just saying that if you know something is going to be reprinted every year or every two years, like Fable Passage every year, basically, uh, every two years you get Shocklands or you get Fetchlands or you get something, then that thing doesn't have any value anymore because it is definitely not collectible. It's going to get reprinted. It's the expectation of the reprint that hurts. It's almost like the run to the bank. The bank has the money. The money is just tied up in not incredibly liquid assets. The, the bank may have lent out the money for a mortgage, so it's not like they can just ask for the money back. The bank might have invested the money into stocks or bonds, which sometimes banks do. And I don't know if they're allowed to do that anymore, but that's like the 2008 financial crisis type of scenario. The bank has money. It just doesn't have that much cash on hand, so it's not liquid. And the run to the bank is kind of a psychology thing where, oh, shit, the bank doesn't have any money. I need to get there first. That's what's happening here. It's really a psychology exercise for the fetch lands is, oh, shit, these fetch lands are going to be reprinted every single year from here on out. I need to, like, yeet my way out of here. Um, and that is, and then people dump the land before the reprint. Modern Horizons is some time away, but it's already having a big impact on the prices. You can go ahead and look at it. And if you need a place set, it might not be bad. Like the day, the day around the release, maybe the week after release to pick up the older ones that you may want. Um, and the price of the foils and so on, it really comes down to reserve list collectible, Urza block collectible and odor. Um, that's how I view collectability. I don't think any of this new stuff is collectible. I don't see, I mean, you can make money from it, flipping it, whatnot, but it's not a long-term hold because they could literally reprint it tomorrow. So if you're holding on to lilies and you're holding on to snaps, they could reprint that tomorrow. And uh, another secret layer, or they're going to reprint it in a jumpstart or mystery. There's so many vehicles, commander, challenger, Back when I was doing MTG Finance and I, you know, everyone was good at it because everyone made money because uh, honestly, it was so easy, right? You buy any modern card and you look like a genius, right? Because every modern card goes up in price. It was uber easy back then to look smart at MTG Finance because literally you could pick any card out of a hat and you would have made money. It's not the way. Um, back then, we didn't even have our first Modern Masters. So it was like, hey, this is a limited supply of cards and these cards are not going to be reprinted. We didn't understand that they would be, I mean, well, I, I had just seen the commander decks. I remember it was my 2L year of law school and the commander decks came out and I thought they were like really, really interesting. I was like, wow, look at all these reprints is what I said. <laughs> because I was like, damn, look at all these reprints. And, and, and now like you compare that to today, where you have commander decks, you have more, I guess you get more of them. You have challenger decks for standard cards. You have um, collector's editions, mythic editions, planeswalker editions. 
You have mystery booster packs. Um, the mystery booster pack had pre-printed 5,000, I think, 5,000 plus cards. That's insane to me. Um, if you told me back then this is the way it would be, I would be like, oh, don't buy modern. <laughs> you know, I, I would have avoided modern completely uh, as an invest. Now, it's fun to play. And I do believe in the philosophy that no card should ever be more than $20 when it comes to a card that is in standard or modern. The cards, the Fetch lands will eventually be under $20. I promise you this. Because if we reprint the Fetch lands every two years, or and it's kind of this cycle, and eventually people figure out, oh, wow, it's getting reprinted every two years. Every two to four, maybe every four years we have a mass reprinting, and then every two years we just have like a secret layer or something like that. Um, there's no way these prices can ever hold because you know what's coming. It's like almost like rotation. It's how I view rotation. Like once you survive one rotation, you understand that, hmm, around this time I should get rid of my standard cards because they're going to start losing mass amounts of value. And that blows my mind that people buy boxes of standard cards. I mean, standard boxes. Like I don't know who they're selling it to. And I don't know what type of volume they're selling it at because I don't think the demand... After a standard box rotates out, for the next 5 or 10 years, if you look at RTR, Return to Ravnica, it just doesn't gain any money. And I know that there are exceptions like Kaladas and so on, but like who's buying this stuff and what are they doing with it? Because they're definitely not opening it. As soon as they open it, they lost 90% of their value. So like, what are they doing with it? Like, they're not drafting it because these are speculators, right? So, I mean, they're just selling to the next dummy in line, I guess. Hi, guys.